How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're in about versus Puff in the Smogon OU tier. The overused tier has recently had its um, tier shift, so like some things are OU and some things aren't OU anymore that uh, were before. Um, for example, Iron Crown is now OU, which is interesting, so yeah. Stick around till the end for the rental code for the team, and with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Puff. So they're going to lead off with Bananas. The Infernape as we lit off with Vaporeon. So obviously it's a great lead for us. I was expecting the Samurai and I was just going to flip turn on it or Scold. Um, I guess I can't really sit in here and Scold this thing because it could have Thunder Punch and we can't burn it anyway. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a flip turn first and foremost. They might even go for a Stealth Rocks to be fair. If they go for a U-turn which is great. It's going to bounce right off Vaporeon. And that means we get a free flip turn on whatever they bring in. If they bring in the Clodzire then we know it's Water Absorb which is good. Um, which means we can set up. But they actually bring in Shigir, which is going to be the pre-marina. Nice and, nice and powerful. But as usual, if you enjoy this video and you want to see more daily Pokemon Wi-Fi battles like this one, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out. With that being said, pre-marina is here. Should we go into Sceptile and just Leaf Blade into Oblivion? I think that's a good, good shout. Um, I think that's our only option, really. So we'll have to go into Sceptile. Luckily, we won't use the item yet, so we can save the Unburden for later. Sceptile goes really hard against their team as well, if we can get rid of that Corviknight. So what I'm going to do here is I'm fully expecting them to not stay in here. They probably go straight into Corviknight. So I want to predict that and go for the Armor Rouge play. But I feel like I'm going to over... I feel like I'm over predicting if I do that. I really feel like I'm over predicting if I do that. Um, I think we go straight for a Leaf Blade. Um, just... I knew the Cor I know the Corviknight is really obvious, but I don't want to over predict. And uh, they're going to mark us the once well train, which is going to be the Corviknight. So Corviknight just come in. That's fine. So we could have made the play, but I, di I didn't want to risk the Armor Rouge getting smacked in the face with a water type attack, you know? So they know we're physical now. We get hurt by the Rocky Helmet, which is unfortunate. Like I said, Sitan does really well against their team, so I definitely don't want to mess this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Armor Rouge now. Armor Rouge can come through. We'll withdraw. And then that way, if they go for a U-turn, we're at least going to get our weak armor boost, which is going to be nice. So we're going to Mordor the Armor Rouge real quick. There we go. They go for a U-turn, activating our weak armor, which is amazing. Gives us a nice speed boost. And so now they have to think twice about what they're going to bring in, which is great. So they're going to go back and they're probably going to bring Pre-Marina in if I had to guess. If I had to guess, I, I would say they bring Pre-Marina in here. Uh, they bring True Blade in there. That's the uh, Samurai, right? Yeah, the Samurai comes in. So that is, that is definitely something. So I don't want to stay in here, even though we're weak armor. I kind of just want to go into my Iron Treads, but that's risky. And I also want to go into Hydreigon. I think Hydreigon's a better one because it resists both stabs. Um, and Samurai doesn't normally carry Ice Coverage, or it might carry Sacred Sword, but I don't think they go for it here. So we'll bring Hydreigon in. And they go for a Ceaseless Edge to get the spikes up, which makes sense. It's going to do a bit of damage to us as well. Um, and then what they're probably going to do here is they're probably going to switch out into the Clod or the uh, Corviknight. So I'm going to go for a U-turn. And even if they don't switch out, which they haven't, we're going to break potential Sash with the U-turn, which is great. So um, they also know we're Scarfed now. Oh no, Hydreigon outspeeds Samurai, I believe. So they don't necessarily know we're Scarfed. So what we do now is, um, if we assume they're going to go for a Sacred Sword, we should go into Vaporeon, which I am going to do now. Unfortunately, we're going to get some Spikes damage, but it's fine. We get some spikes damage, which is always fine. They go for a sacred sword. There we go. So they are probably focused, Sash, and was expecting to live that Draco Meteor. Um, which is fine. Absolutely fine by me. We know they're not choice now as well, which is good to know. Uh, now I'm going to go for a wish, because they probably stay in and go for a Ceaseless Edge. They do. It shouldn't KO us. It does KO us. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay, so Vaporeon does go down, but it's not the end of the world. Vaporeon Vaporeon's like super useful this game. Especially if that Clod's War Absorb, which it might be, then it's, it's especially not useful. So uh, now we can go into Hydreigon and we can drop a Draco, which is going to be great. So we're going to Maleficent, like so. Doesn't care about the spikes at all. Um, and then we'll just drop a Draco, I guess. They probably go into Pre-Marina, but it's fine. I don't mind. They do withdraw True Blade, the Samurott. Are they going to go Pre-Marina? Terra. Who's Terra? Is that the Clod's Ire? It is the Clod's Eye. So let's see how well Clod's Eye takes the Draco Meteor. Probably really well. It does take it really well, which is great for them. Um, they're probably going to go for his Stealth Rocks here, but this gives us a good opportunity to go for the uh, switch into the Iron Treads to get off the Rapid Spin. So I'm going to go into the Iron Treads now. This Clod's Eye can't Toxic us. It can't Earthquake us because of the Air Balloon. Can't Poison Jab us because of the Steel Typing. 
I think we're pretty good going into Iron Treads here. It completely walls Clodzire to no ends, the air balloon variant does. So we're going to Hot Wheel. Floating the air on our air balloon. They go for an earthquake, and of course it doesn't work, which is great. We can now freely go for a rapid spin, and then if they go Corviknight, we can go for a Volt Switch. So uh, what I'm going to do here is... I'm going to go for the... Mm, I'm going to get the Stealth Rocks up first, because they're going to go into Corviknight anyway, right? They're going to go into Corviknight anyway. Grim. What's Grim? Chestnut comes in. So we get the Stealth Rocks up, which is fine. And now I do want to rapid spin away these um, spikes, that's for sure. Um, so I think... I don't want to break my air balloon, though. I think we go for a rapid spin anyway. So I'm going to go for that rapid spin and get rid of those spikes. They are going to break our air balloon, but it's fine. They may even go for a spikes of their own. But the spikes disappear. They go for a knockoff, which is going to get rid of our balloon. I'm glad I went for a knockoff and not a fighting type move like body press, though. That, that's, that's worked out a lot better for us. So they probably, if I had to guess... Um, go for a, either a spiky shield here or something else. So I'm going to go for a Volt Switch. Volt Switch comes through. It's a bit of chip damage on the Chestnut at the end of the day. I have to be careful with Chestnut because it's a very difficult Pokemon to pull off. Um, to, to take down, sorry. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I, I just saw the knockoff, but they probably go for a fighting type move now. Um, so I, I'm leaning towards the Armor Rouge. Armor Rouge can live a knockoff and activate the weak, weak, um, the weak armor and the weakness policy as well. So it's not the end of the world as well. So they get, they go for a knockoff. That's not going to KO us. Because it's probably defensive chestnut. We get the weak armor boost. Which is going to boost our speed. And we get the weakness policy. Which is going to boost our attack and our special attack. So this Armor Rouge is now a big threat to this team. Like a really big threat to their team. The only thing we've got to worry about is priority from the likes of the Samurots, potentially, potentially. So I'm going to go for the armor cannon here because it, I feel like if they're going to terror, they're going to terror steel to be immune to the psychic. So they withdraw Grim. Are they going to go into the pre-marina though? That's the real question. Terror, that's going to be the Clod's Eye, right? Yeah, Clod's Eye comes in. Let's see how well Clod's Eye takes an armor cannon. Um, we'll, we'll see whether it's, um, you know, whether it's uh, unaware or not. It's definitely unaware. Which is good to know. But I'm I'm firmly a believer that Expanding Force will take care of this thing right now. So they have got Black Sludge, which is good to know as well. I didn't realize that. Um, do I go for an Expanding Force? I think we do risk it. I think we risk it because if anything, they go for a Recover here, right? We take them out with the Expanding Force. So Clod's Eye is out of the way. And now we just need to get that Corviknight out of the way. And then Septile can do something for a change. Septile actually goes really hard against their entire team. If it gets the um, Swords Dance up and the Unburden. So they're going to go into the Infernape now. And the Infernape's probably got Mark Punch, which means we don't. Li we, we definitely die to a Mark Punch at minus defense. Um, so I think we have to switch out. But I don't know what to go into. Do I go into Ndidi and get the. Hmm. That is the good question, Jack. That's a good question. Do we go into the Ndidi or. Because we're going to need Arm Armor Rouge for the Corviknight. We definitely need Armor Rouge for the Corviknight, that's for sure. But I am at plus, I'm at, I like, oh, this is a tough one. Let's go for an expanding force. Um, we do outspeed them. They do get KO'd. They obviously probably expected us to go in DD there to block the mock punch. But I was like, nah, I'm going to stay in with Arm Rouge and just like KO that thing easily. So what can they do here? I think True Blade comes in. That's the Samurai. Has he got a priority move? If he's got a priority, then that's, that's fair enough. But I don't think they do. Let's go for an energy ball. I think we outspeed. They actually go for the Sucker Punch. Okay, so Sucker Punch comes through. Armor Rouge goes down. So that's unfortunate. Um, why didn't they bring that one in the first place? Why did they let the Inferno go down? Eh, it don't matter. It don't matter. So. So. Now we can go into Indeed if you want to. And we can Dazzling Gleam this thing. And then we can set up the Psychic Terrain. For good old um, Sceptile. But the, the, the problem we've got is that Corviknight is still there. Still there. So what do we do? What do we do Indeed. Um, I'm leaning towards the Hydreigon to drop a Draco. But that baits in the Pre-Marina. I am leaning towards the Ndidi. Ndidi does outspeed the Samurott. And we can also go for um, a Dazzling Gleam, which is super effective, which will definitely take it out. It also baits in the um, Corviknight, which is good. So I'm going to go for the Dazzling Gleam here, see if we can take out the Samurott. So they withdraw. Are they going to go Corviknight or Pre-Marina? They're going to go into Marcus. That's the Corviknight, right? 
Yeah, Corviknight comes in. So any damage we can get on this Corviknight is damage, obviously. But uh, any damage we can get on it is good damage. So let's go for a Dazzling Gleam. That's great. They probably go for a Defog here, which will get rid of our uh, Psychic Terrain. So I'm going to go for an Expanding Force while I still can. Expanding Force comes through. It should do a lot of damage still. Yeah, that's some good damage on the Corviknight. As they go for a Body Press. And now... We're in a very good position because we can just expanding force again. And they kind of have to roost here. So we go for another expanding force. If we can weaken this Corviknight. Oh, we took it out. Nice. No, it wasn't even crit. Nice. The expanding force came through. That's amazing. So now Ndidi is looking really good. Shigur the Galar champion comes in. That is going to be the pre-marina. What I'm going to do here is because we've got the expanding... We've got still got the psychic terrain for a while. I'm going to, I'm going to go for... I want to go for a Healing Wish. I really want to go for a Healing Wish. To in to get a free switch in S Sceptile. I think I will go for the Healing Wish here. And I think Sceptile can finish up the game. I just want to showcase the pure power of the Sceptile. You know? So we'll let Indeedee go down. Like so. I'm so glad that Corv and I didn't defog. They go for a Moonblast. But it failed, obviously. We go into Sceptile here. Pop that psychic seed and go for a swords dance. We can't. We, there's no point terroring because if they're gonna do anything to us, it's ice beam. Ice beam's gonna come through. So the healing wish came true for Razor, heals it all the way back to full, which could matter. We pop our psychic seed, get a boost in our special defense, which is amazing. And now we go for a swords dance, which is also amazing, equally as amazing. Swords dance comes through, like so. We get that boost in our attack. They go for a Moonblast, which is not going to KO us because of the Psychic Seed. We now go for a Leaf Blade, which will definitely KO the Pre-Marina. There we go. Nicely done, Sceptile. So for a change, Sceptile's actually doing something good. Sceptile's actually doing something good. So we're going to save the Terra Flying for the Chestnut because if the Chestnut comes in and decides to go for a Body Press after Terra Stealing, we're going to need that. We're going to need to be able to live that. So in comes Grim, which is probably the uh, Chestnut, right? Yeah, the Chestnut comes in. The fact that they brought this in tells me they're going to Terra. So I Terra flying here. And I Swords Dance, because they might go for a Spiky Shield Terra. They may go for a Spiky Shield Terra. So I'm going to Terra flying Swords Dance. Because I'm really expecting them to Terra here. So we Terra flying and we Swords Dance. It might be getting a bit greedy, but you know what? I'm 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 all for it. I'm all for it. If we can pull Sceptile off here, I'm all for I'm all I'm all for it. So we terra flying so we can be resistant to that body press that could be coming. Like so. They terrestrialize as well into what a steel type? I'm hoping it's steel. I'm hoping it's steel. If it's not, it's not the end of the world. Fairy. Okay, so fairy we can deal with fairy. All we have to do is get an, an extra sword dance like we are doing. And then go for a uh, um, an acrobatics, which will be 140 base power stab flying move. Uh, plus four attack. They go for body press. Oh, that does too much damage. That's not good because they could have spiky shield here. They could have spiky shield here. I think they go for a spiky shield. I don't think they expect us to swords dance again. So let's go swords dance again. They do spiky shield. Great. They spiky shield, which is amazing. We know they're leftovers, so they're not Rocky Helmet. Getting up that extra Swords Dance there was risky, but it's worth it. Now they have to try for the double Spiky Shield. That's the only way they can win this. That and also if Psychic Terrain wears off, which I think it does. Yeah, it does. So that's unfortunate because it means Samrock can come through and break our Sceptile's streak. So let's go for that Acrobatics real quick. And then if they get a second Spiky Shield up, that's going to be unfortunate, but it is what it is. Acrobatics comes through at plus six attack. Stab. Takes out the chestnut easily, no problem. Down goes Grim. Sceptile, you absolute legend. Now the problem is, though, we've got a uh, Samurott with Sucker Punch on the other side of the field, which is very dangerous. So True Blade comes in, and it can easily Sucker Punch us. We could play the mind games and go for a Swords Dance. I'll try, I'll try it. I'll try it. So they go for a Sucker Punch, and it obviously fails. We go for a Swords Dance. And the right play to do here is, I think, I think in these mind game things, you always go, I'm going to go for a Leaf Blade now. I don't think they'll Sucker Punch. They didn't Sucker Punch. Yes, Sceptile come through. Yay. <laughs> we got a Sceptile vid. I'm so happy with that. Nice. 
they finally got a Sceptile video with the Sceptile team. Absolutely amazing. GG Puff, that was a really fun one. It came right down to it. Sceptile came through. I'm so happy with that. But as usual, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Let me know if you do use it. Let me know if you have as much success with it as I have, which is amazing. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.